Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again, that's for Art. Uh, I just put out uh, two videos in response to Tom Ackerman's video last night. I am definitely going to continue reading. This is um, finishing up this article that I found from, uh, I guess it was a peer-reviewed article that I had found a couple years ago. It's called Testing the Validity of the International Atomic Energy Agency Safety Culture Model. And as we have found out in the previous, like, 15 pages that they really have never tested it. So we're near the end of it and we're in the discussion part of it. I'm going to continue from where I left off the other day. This paper is especially relevant to the IAEA organizations, let me turn the sound up, organizations using the IAEA model for self-assessment purposes, regulators currently using this model to determine policies and guidelines affecting the function of nuclear facilities, NPPs, research reactors, fuel cycle facilities, etc. And those scholars and practitioners interested in this safety, in this model of safety culture. Two practical implications of our results are discussed next. First, the IAEA provides detailed instructions on how to use the attributes when addressing safety culture. That's from IAEA 2008. But it does not clarify the role of the dimensions in safety culture assessments. The IAEA also proposes that each attribute corresponds to one specific dimension of its model, but it does not specify how either either how the relation between attributes and their corresponding dimensions should be addressed in practice. This lack of specificity and guidance may lead to different interpretations about how to use the model in theory and in practice, how it should be empirically tested, etc. Authors such as Taylor in 2010 noted that the strength of a particular dimension of the IAEA model should be judged by assessing the degree of presence of the dimension's attributes. However, our findings suggest that the current attributes of the model should not be grouped into a higher level dimensions. For example, if attributes of C1, C2, C3, C4, and C5 receive higher scores on a safety culture assessment, one cannot conclude that accountability for safety is clear, which is the label of dimension C in the, is in the organization. But beyond the lack of guidance, another point must be noted. In practice, practitioners often only consider the interpretations suggested by the higher level dimensions instead of the information derived by the scores of the individual items for several reasons like saving time, more intuitive approach, etc. Consequently, not only the clear guidance of the use of the models must be provided, but the attributes must also be true indicators of the dimensions to which they are supposedly belong and be grouped together in practice as well as in theory. Second, our study suggests that the face validity of the IAEA safety culture model is, as it stands now, is low. The extent to which a safety culture model is face valid has practical implications for the nuclear industry. A model with a low face validity will not make clear what is intended to cover and what its purpose is. If the workers of a nuclear power plant find the IAE mo a model hard to understand and not very intuitive, they will have difficulty internalizing it. And if workers do not assimilate the model, they cannot be expected to contribute to the type of culture described by the model. The contribution and involvement of all workers in safety-related issues is in itself a characteristic of a strong safety culture. Whew. Wow. As if there is a safety culture. As if there is even anything safe about nuclear. A number of possible limitations of our study are highlighted. First, 
Although sections 2.1.3 and 2.2.3 explain why we chose the sample of students to test the face validity of the IAEA model and a sample of experts in organizational behavior to test its content validity, we acknowledge that using samples of a different nature could have provided relevant or perhaps distinct results from those we have obtained. On the one hand, although face validity is often assessed by participants who are not knowledgeable about the constructs under study, i.e. students, it is worth noting that the purpose of testing face validity is to ensure the measure of, is self-evident to the people who use the assessment instrument. In the case of the IAEA model, employees of the nuclear industry Nevertheless, we decided not to include a sample of this type because nuclear power workers are typically exposed to the model, which they see in courses, seminars, congresses, posters around the nuclear power plant, etc. On the other hand, it would have been interesting to test the content validity of the IEA model with a sample of experts in culture safety with the nuclear industry. However, we did not include such a sample because their answers could have been biased based on their previous knowledge about the IAEA model or other models and instruments used in the nuclear industry that have been influenced by the IAEA model. Second, the fact that a few students reported confusion about the meaning of the attributes and dimensions could have contributed to the variability in their allocation of attributes and dimensions. If the students had problems understanding the content of the model, it could be expected that some of their answers would be arbitrary, which in turn would have contributed to the observed low face validity of the model. However, the sample of experts in the content validity study also showed a low performance in the allocation of attributes to dimensions. In this case, the difficulties in sorting in the sorting task could not be due to a lack of understanding of the content of the model. Therefore, it seems reasonable to reject the lack of knowledge of some students as an alternative explanation for the results of the face validity study. Third, Nuclear power plants are highly regulated work environments in which audits, control processes, and safety measurements are part of the worker's routine. Right, we've watched uh, Homer Simpson, what he does, click. That's, that's their safety model, folks. Uh, the questionnaire we used for the third study of this paper not only served to test the factorial validity of the IAEA model, but it was also used together with the other questionnaires to inform the members of the nuclear power plant about the state of their safety culture. This could have been reason for participants to complete the questionnaire in a socially desirable manner. Such a tendency towards high ratings could have contributed to one of the to the one-dimensional structure of the model supported by our results. This could have been especially applicable in a, quote, blame culture, where members do not feel free to report mistakes and try to give the best picture of their work and the functioning of organizational policies, processes, and practices. However, we tried to avoid social desirability bias by guaranteeing the anonymity and confidentiality of the participants' answers. On the other hand, in the nuclear industry that their plants must be managed under the no blame principle should be enough to encourage workers to express their opinions openly and honestly. Oh, we're at nine minutes, okay. Fourth, the attributes of the model are not designed to be used as items on a questionnaire. The number of these attributes are double and triple barreled, and as such, respondents can agree with one part of the item, but perhaps not with the other. We acknowledge that including these attributes in the questionnaire in the third study is a limitation of this paper. However, if we had rephrased them, the conclusions of this study would have been seriously biased. 
We kept all the attributes unaltered because of the purpose of our study was not to create a safety culture questionnaire, but rather to test whether our participants' answers to the attributes could replicate the five-dimensional structure proposed by the IAEA. Despite this, three reasons support that the results of the third study have not been compromised by the barreled items. We could not find significant differences between the number of missing values of barreled and non-barreled items. None of the attributes increased the alpha values of its corresponding dimensions when it was removed. And none of the participants verbally expressed difficulties in understanding or responding to any of the barreled items. Nevertheless, we advise the nuclear industry to carefully review and adapt the attributes. Some attributes could be divided and rephrased as separate items if they are to be included as part of a questionnaire. Fifth, the fact that all the items across the five dimensions were rated by the same raters could explain, at least partially, the high correlation and lack of imperial, empirical determinability among the five dimensions of the IAEA model as assessed by the corresponding attributes. To control for this possibility, we perform Harmon's single factor test, which requires taking measures of all clearly different traits, excuse me, we performed Harmon's single factor test, which requires taking measures of clearly different traits and loading all the measures into an exploratory factor analysis under the assumption that the presence of common method variants will result in a single factor or a general factor accounting for the majority of the convariance, covariance of the measures. Uh, I see that we're at 12. I'm going to stop. I don't know about you, but we're almost over with this. Uh, I think I'll be able to finish this the next time I read because we just have this wee bit to go. And then it will be read for posterity's sake. We will have understood that the IAEA created, just like usual, a bullshit piece of paper and says that it's been proven and never proved anything. Just like the 90% rule, folks. So, put your courage feet on. Take some action to stop these monsters, please. We're begging you to please stand up. Ciao.